hey there, and welcome to the Forest Park Podcast. I'm Pastor Luke, and we're glad to have William Owens from the Kentucky Mountain Mission Youth Haven Bible Camp. That's such a big <laughs> word to say. Uh, as a return guest, which is great. So thanks for coming back. Um, he was here yesterday with us in worship, and as we partner with multiple different ministries and missions uh, as a church family, five minutes on a Sunday morning is just not enough time for us to be able to go into detail and hear the heart and and the type of work that is done, and how Forest Park is connected. So we're really grateful that William is uh, able to be here with us to, for a more in-depth conversation about Kentucky Mountain Mission. So as we were talking before we started recording, I was born and raised in Texas. So uh, if I start having a Southern accent uh, throughout the podcast, no, that's not me pandering. It's just me returning to my roots. <laughs> uh, so... Could you share a bit about your journey and how you got involved with Kentucky Mountain Mission Youth Haven Bible Camp? Okay, I started um, as a camper at Youth Haven Bible Camp whenever I was in the third grade. And um, we, uh, you know, being one of 14 kids, but uh, uh, they used to come around to the schools with Bible lessons, and we could um, do Bible lessons. We I uh, did, um, when I first started, though, they had a program that if you memorized 200 Bible verses, you could get a free week at camp. Ooh. And so we had a worker that came to our school once a month, and we'd do the Bible lessons or the Bible verses. And so we'd either get a, a New Testament. Uh, we got that first, and then we got a um, Bible book. Uh, then uh, we got a... Um, um, a Bible, and then the, whenever we got to 200, we got a free week at camp. All right. And so it, during all of that, and then the guy come into camp, um, and uh, he would do, um, he was a ventriloquist, and he would talk to us about Bible lesson talk and tell us about the Lord. But um, anyway, I won a free week at camp. The Lord had already been dealing with my heart through the verses. Mm. And uh, my first week there, we had a missionary from, um, I believe it was uh, South America, um, a husband and wife from here, they'd gone there as missionaries, and they were our missionary speakers for the week. And uh, through their message, God gave them that uh, um, my uh, pastor that uh, brought me to camp, the one who came into the schools, he led me to the Lord. Okay. And so then whenever I was a teenager, I started working there in the summertime. And so I worked there uh, every summer I could. And uh, then... Um, you know, I was saved at camp. The Lord called me into ministry at camp. And um, then I came back full time after going to Bible school and working there. And so my wife and I are going on 47 years. Wow, 47 years in the same place. That's amazing. Yeah. What, what makes the camp experience unique for the youth uh, that attend and how, how does it impact their lives? Okay, it is a, it's a good opportunity for them whenever they come, you know, uh, we don't do the TV, and we don't do a lot of the, the things there. It's, it's a break that we uh, get them in and try to get them to just focus. We do. Uh, we have service twice a day for them. The, their counselors are with them all the time. Uh, we have speakers who come in, and uh, so whenever they speak, and then all during the week, all during the day, they're involved in the campers' lives, and and they have one-on-one -on -one time with them, and. Yeah. everything there and so we try to make it a place where they can feel like they're saved and also that they're loved mm, that's beautiful are there any memorable stories or transformations that you've witnessed in campers over, over the years uh yes um like with my own self i accepted the lord and was called into ministry through there but i've had other friends that um, you know the lord has uh saved them they've gone on we had uh one of the guys that was older than i uh, but uh, I knew him, and uh, him and his uh, their, his wife, they were from Beattyville there, and uh, he was um, one of the kids. Uh, his dad was an alcoholic, his uh, mom, but um, they had a lot of problems. He grew up very poor, but through the camp, they were able to use him. He came in, he accepted the Lord as his Savior, and he ended up going to Bible college, and then um, he was a missionary um, and then, um, Oh, wow. What a story. Turned in missionary and, uh, then him and his wife and his kids, uh, they worked there for many years and then he lost his life and, um, uh, he drowned, um, 
down in the mission field there just doing some spending some time with his family and wow so, uh, but yet it's through that we've seen many that have come to know the lord and and the lord have used them into the ministry one way or the other oh that's amazing what a transfer that's that's great. How does camp incorporate faith into its programs? What what is what roles does it play in sharing in the campers' experiences? You, you've talked a lot about introducing them to the Lord. How do we build a faith life? Okay, what we do is we introduce them. Uh, we also have Bible lessons that they do, and um, they can enter and do the lessons, and they can win a free week of camp like next summer. Okay. Or they do that um, uh, just to follow up. Uh, but we do have someone who does a follow-up ministry with them, and, um, uh, you know, he follows up to that, gives them Bible lessons, encourages them. Um, they're able to take and uh, uh, contact me or any of the other workers if there's need in their lives. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also we use a lot of the campers that come back, get older. Uh, we use them as far as uh, part of our junior staff team, but we work with them um all year long, uh, we get contacts um, as far as the schools. Um, I've had some of the kids that have gotten, you know, through problems in their lives and their parents' life. I've been called into the schools to help do some counseling. Uh, we have a program. We go into the high school, middle school, and grade school uh, that we deal with the campers. And um, we do with like FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And one of the guys does that. Uh, we also have the community center. We have a um, getting ready to start back. We've been shut down for a while, but we're opening back up now. We had to put a new roof and things on our community center, but we have after school bowling. Uh, we have a bowling team uh, for the high school, and then we have a climbing wall. We have uh, climbing uh, teams, and, and all through that, we have uh, lock ins for teen nights and New Year's Eve thing, but we have the Bible. We teach them Bible lessons. We share with them, uh, like with the bowling, the after-school bowling, we have a couple workers. They deal, like, in lane one and two. They just focus on that. Those are the same ones they deal with the whole time that we have that league. They don't go, and, and so the kids get to know them. We get to know them. We're able to follow up with them. We're able to talk uh, to them, and we have a lot of them. They'll contact us about prayer request and, and things and you know that's going on in their lives and their family lives and so. it sounds deeply relational yeah. and the, that you you expect to be in it for the long haul yes. that this is not a oh oh just come have have fun for oh, a week no you are you are investing long term to make sure that people have the opportunity to be discipled and yes. grow along with a lot of really fun activity that's yeah. that's absolutely great um, as someone who is deeply involved in ministry 47 years that's absolutely phenomenal what what do you think is the most pressing challenge for today's younger generation well as I I deal and um, with a lot of kids and um, I, um, going around the colleges right now, um, and I deal with other missions and everything. We're having we're having problems with, um, in, and you and I talked about it earlier, but mm-hmm. there was a song that we used to sing, my family, we used to sing together many years ago, my mom and my sisters and I, but there was a song and then there's a verse that talks about how that the, the fields are white unto harvest and everything, but the uh, song we sang is, my houses are full, my fields are empty, and as I think about that today, we're finding it harder and harder to get young people to see the need to get involved in these other people's lives. Mm. Um, I deal with the school board, been on the school board for many years. I deal with the mission. I deal a lot with kids. But I'm finding that um, we're, they're just not sold out to the calling of God in their life. And uh, what I'm seeing is, you know, I will do what I want to do when I want to do it. Uh, you know, I never had that choice, and I, I don't think that God gives us that choice. Mm. Whenever God saved me, he saved me for a purpose. If he didn't have something for me to do, I would really believe that today I accepted the Lord, he would have taken me out of this. Mm. Uh, but, you know, I have the power through the Lord Jesus Christ to overcome the sins of the world. I have the power to overcome the burdens and the weaknesses and, and things like that. The leading, you know, the devil is our enemy. And the devil leads us astray, but God is our Savior. 
He's the God who loves us, who gave his son Jesus to die on the cross for us. He's the God who called us, and he calls us into a position to serve him, to follow him, to be like him. Is Christ in us the hope of glory? And, you know, this world has yes. no hope except through the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And I'm finding a lot more and more people that are taking the lie of Satan and leaving and you know churches, leaving their call into ministry. Uh, a lot of young people that are coming out of college, they don't know what they're going to do. Right. They don't know what they're going to do, where are they going to go. Well, we have an answer. Um, God, he, he saved us for a purpose. And um, that same way with me. Whenever God is done with me, whenever that time is, I know who holds my future. Mm. I know where I'll spend eternity. So it sounds like you think the, the struggle of this current young, young generation is, is lack of hope and lack of knowing what they're, what they're supposed to do, that lacking a purpose. Lacking a purpose and also uh, the family. The, the, the family is so messed up now. And, and what I grew up with and everything, I grew up poor, but I had a mom who loved me. I had a dad who didn't get saved until later on in life and everything like that, but he was crippled. Uh, he couldn't do some of the things and, and everything there. But I had a dad who loved me. Even though he didn't know the Lord as his Savior, he loved me. Right. And my mom loved me, made sure I go to church, made sure that you know I knew about the Lord and, and everything. And they taught me. Uh, they taught me to work. They taught me to, to respect people. Um, and this day and time, we're finding a lot. There's not the respect mm. and everything there. And so um, that's where I see the weaknesses is in homes and churches and that we're dealing with out there in schools. And, and there's no respect. And even what God did, you know, the respect that, you know, uh, God loved me. He knows my sins, but yet he loved me. And he forgave me. And he knows my weaknesses, but yet he loves me. And so a lot of these are not been taught that. They're not seeing the family, um, you know, circle there that, that we have. You know, your kids, you love them. You're teaching them. They know what you believe. And a lot of these kids, they don't know what's happening mm. tomorrow. They don't know what to believe because nobody's telling them that there is truth. There is love. There's hope. Do you find uh, that camp is one of the great places that you can bring bring that hope to them? It's one of the greatest places that they can, if you can get a camp to realize. Uh, now, we, uh, you were mentioned there a while ago about some of the things, you know, we, we do a lot of different things. But at our camp, we have horseback riding, we have fishing, we have a lot of different things. We have games and everything. But our, it's not a basketball camp even though we play basketball. Right. It's not a swim camp, even though we swim. It's not a horseback camp, even though we ride horses and things. Right. But it's a Bible camp. It's a camp that we focus on teaching them about somebody who loved them so much. Mm. And that's where that it is so valuable is that we get, and, and that's why I pray and ask people to keep praying. We're, we're looking for people that are called into this ministry. Uh, you know, we have some people that come in and God speaks to their heart and brings them back to where they want, even in workers. But I need workers that come in that know the Lord and they know the love to show these kids. Not only do we have the third through 12th grade kids, but we have a lot of special needs kids. Mm. They need to know that somebody loves them. And I tell you, uh, it's, it's a hard work, hard camp. But they are some of the most appreciative campers that we have. They love and they're so thankful for everything. Mm. And so it's we learn a lot. Sure. Not just for the campers, but we as workers learn a lot. Yeah, you go from these you kids. grow through that pilgrimage as, as well. That's right. Wow. So what role does community play in these camp settings? How does it contribute? How does community uh, and, and the your surround your immediate surrounding community and the community that you create in, in the camp contribute to the overall experience? Okay, well, we're going back to the same thing with the kids in the community. A lot of them with the hope and everything. But um, when I get back home, uh, the 17th, we have a Friends of Youth Haven dinner. I do that each year, and I invite people from the community that have had a part or helped us some way or another to come in, see what happened this year. I share with them some of the things, some of the 
victories and everything we've had in camp. And then I share with them, you know, this is our goal this year. Mm. This is what we want. All, this is how I need you. I need you to pray. I need you to give. I need you to come and volunteer. And we have a lot of them. We have the free dental clinics that we bring a lot of these people in. And uh, they come in to get their teeth cleaned and, and they get their fillings done or they get their teeth extracted or, or things like that. And, and and one of the things that I talked to them before, we you don't argue with the dentist whenever you go in. <laughs> they they don't get paid. They're, they're donating their time. They're right. coming. Um, we have people that's going to be talking to you about the Lord. You don't argue with them about that. Uh, everything you listen, they come, they love you. You don't have to agree with us. You don't have to accept us, but you have to listen. Mm -hmm. And then I always tell them too, before you ever go in, you are here today because people love you. You're here today that God loves you more. And you're going to, there's people in there that'll pull your teeth. And there's people in there that'll take and clean your teeth. That, you know, feel your teeth, do things like that. But that's not why we're here. Right. You need to know the Lord Jesus Christ, your personal Savior. The greatest thing that can happen in your life, they can fix your teeth, but we can fix your heart through the Lord Jesus Christ. If your heart is not right with the Lord, it doesn't matter what your teeth look like. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's something, and we're, we're trying to work through the community to meet the needs of the, of the kids and, and, and through that. And then in the community, like working with these campers, I've got some of these campers that are working at our community center right now. They come in after school, and they help with bowling. They help, you know, cleaning and, and things like that. Um, we've also been able to help some of them through Microsoft, a program that we were able to be a part of community um, computer science. And we've had several kids wow. that were able to go to college that couldn't go to college. Uh, through the high school bowling, we've had eight or nine of them get free scholarship for wow. bowling and everything there. And so that's what we're trying to do is see that there is in hope. I never, ever thought that I would have a chance to be sitting here in my life. Right. Um, and I never thought I'd have a chance to take a group of kids to Seattle, Washington, and, and to do the things there, to go around there. But I did that for 10, 11 years. And uh, so God opened doors for those who are willing to walk through them. Amen. So I want to circle back to the, the dental clinic because that was the connection that Forest Park has. Can you talk a little bit about the kind of work that Forest Park, I, you, you talked about what they do there, but um, how long have we been coming there? Uh, what, what are our group sizes? How long do they stay? Okay, uh, we have some of your groups that come in usually on a Wednesday or Thursday. They come in and help me. Uh, set up the uh, chairs and all that and get ready. And then we'll usually start a Friday night or uh, Saturday morning. We'll see some of the staff there. But they've been coming here for I, – I I'm not sure. They were one – they came one of the, the first years. Um, we had a group here, and um, your your form, former pastor years ago, uh, Pastor Russ, mm -hmm. and him and his wife and son, I think I mentioned that yesterday, he was there. And, and uh, everything, Dr. Mark and then Lane and several others, they have been coming. Uh, but they come. We have the we have the dentist who come and uh, everything there. Uh, they will do the you know, extractions. We, we're needing hygienists. We need people. But a uh, group from the church, they come. We have some of them who work in the dining room, kitchen. We have some who do other jobs. Okay, so you, you don't have to be a dental expert you don't have to, be a to go on the dental mission trip. You need to yeah, remember that, everybody. No, and um, I had several talk to me yesterday after it, and so we're always looking for help. And right. we have other projects that we're working on maintenance and different things, too. Now, if I remember correctly, they, they load up a bunch of uh, – of equipment here in, mm -hmm. in Muskegon, right? And then they, they, they truck it on down and tra trailer it on down to trailer it down. And uh, one of the things that we need people to keep praying for uh, right now, um, we've got a small grant that we're working on the chairs that we have and a lot of the equipment that we have. They're from dental uh, dentists who have retired and years ago. And so, um, it's just like in you, you know, with your clothes and sometimes I grew up on hand-me-down clothes. Right. We were very poor and everything there. And I'm not ashamed of that uh, because my mom, she sold, we cleaned, whatever she needed to do, she cared for her kids. 
we have a lot of hand-me-down equipment. Mm. Hand-me-down equipment is good when it's working. Sure. But whenever you have 100, 200 people there and your equipment starts tearing down, people get discouraged. They're sitting there all day long and everything. And so we are working with um, uh, a group right here in Grand Rapids through Dr. Mark, um, Mark Gordon, and some of the other workers. We're working through them right now to get some of these portable chairs and uh, we have a lot of these old chairs, and it takes four or five men as we lift those. Oh, man. And we, Behemoth. Huh? We, we do that, and then we store them, and we have dental cl- clinics twice a year in the fall and in the spring. And uh, so we're looking for new equipment, and, and we have that. We'll be able, hopefully, by the time they come down, I'll have nine or ten new chairs that, you know, they're in a bag that you can carry them. And just like a, your luggage, you can carry them. They'll hold the people. It's not something that they got to worry about falling out of. They'll hold the people. We have a new chair that goes with it. We have a new light that goes with it. And then we'll have a new piece where their equipment goes. Okay. And so that's what we're working on. And then we're working for some new up-to-date equipment so that, you know, whenever the doctors are working, dentists are working on cleaning or filling, grinding, whatever, mm-hmm. uh, you know, um, it. Sometimes people down when they don't have problem or the opportunity with a dentist, um, they have some anxiety and oh things sure like that. yeah, and so, dealing with a lot of emotions. Yeah, so we want to deal with that as well. We want to try to, do, and the Lord's been working good. We have our own X-ray machine now uh, that we got a grant for about two years ago. Okay, and uh, so just keep praying about that. We just keep moving forward a little bit. What is your philosophy in after such a long season in ministry of, of navigating challenges and, and obstacles? Uh, do you do you just I mean where, where's the faith part? Where's the uh, where, where's the taking advantage of opportunities and like applying for these grants? What's the general philosophy of how you overcome obstacles and challenges? Well, number one, uh, when I think about that, when people start uh, talking, you know, we need this, we need that. God called me. The Lord is one called me into this ministry. Whatever the Lord wants to do, if he gives us an opportunity for the dental clinic. Mm -hmm. um, I had a person who called me that was actually was supposed to call another camp um, a couple counties away from us. And I said, well, you know, I'd love to work with you, but I'm not who you're looking for. And I started to give him the number of the other mission and everything. He said, you know what? If God didn't want me to talk to you, I wouldn't have called you. And and so, you know, that's the way I look at it, too. It's God's in control. If he wants us to start this program, he'll take care of the program. Mm. He will provide for it. And I've got to trust him. You know, I can't solve everybody's problem. Right. But I know who can and everything. I can't get all this equipment. I can't do the things there. And I can't take the credit for it because it's God. It's, it's not me. It's God. Yeah. In your interaction with campers, what are some common themes or questions that arise regarding their faith? Uh, you know, we deal with a lot just, you know, there's a lot of different uh, beliefs out there. And, um, and there's, it's, it all depends on who you can talk to or who they talk to. I have a lot of program, a lot of questions about, does God really love me? Mm. Why does he love me? Yeah. You know, look at my family or look look what I've done. And then I think of the thief on the cross. And uh, he's there, you know, you got two thieves. One of them giving the Lord a hard time, you know, if you who you are, say you are, come down off the cross, save yourself. And the other one says, you know what? We deserve what we got. Yeah. He did nothing. And he said, whenever you come into your kingdom, will you remember me today? And Jesus says, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And I tried to talk to the, to the campers, teenagers, or younger kids, whoever, about that. God loves you. you yes, I'm, even though I'm a pastor, I'm sinful. Mm-hmm. I am sinful. I am saved by the grace of God. God loves me so much. And, you know, I still have that old sinful nature until God takes me out of this world. But I have the freedom in Christ Jesus to have victory over that. And so I deal with them about that. 
And some of them say, well, I just can't forgive myself. Mm. God forgave you. Mm. And if you allow God to work with you through his word, through your trust in him, you got to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as they grow, and that's, that's how they become, their faith become. But we cannot let them up. Um, we can't, you know, forget them. We can't just throw them away. Uh, we may not like what they're doing. Right. But we got to love them, yep. and we got to encourage them. And that's how I try to deal with that. Okay. So I noticed yesterday dur- during uh, your, your talk uh, in worship, you seem to be carrying a, a heavy burden. Uh, it reminded me when Jesus said to his disciples, you know, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord of the harvest uh, to send more workers into the field. And I, that made me wonder, what thinking about that verse specifically, what is your prayer life like uh, in, in the we need more people, we need more workers? And how do you stay encouraging of yourself in the midst of the, the workload? Um. I have got to spend um, lots of time in prayer, and I got to know that I have people like you, this church. You know, um, I grew up in a very small church. Whenever I was called into the mission, a lot of people said, you'll never make it. You have to have a big home church in order to be on the mission field Mm. because you got to have my church supported me $15 a month. And everything there, but God brought people into my life um, through my wife's family up here, uh, through other people. As you know, God brought in their lives. He's taking care of that um, through the things that you know. Um, whenever things happen in my life, I, I'm in different things. I've I used to be a fire chief for 25 years. We had to start a fire department because we couldn't get insurance. Um, everything like that, um, but God opened that door. We needed insurance. Uh, we needed the fire department. Through the insurance, uh, we started the fire department. Through the fire department, God you know, helped us get that, all of our equipment and everything. Through that, I had men and women who were not attending church. Uh, some were going, but their husbands weren't going. We started a church. We're still, this is my 32nd year, I believe, in that church as a pastor that okay. we started through that fire department. Wow. We've seen several of them saved. I've had a lot of them funeral and everything there to know where they're at. And so today I may be down on one thing, but tomorrow, you know, there's things that keep going on that God keeps showing his love okay. to me more and more, whether it be at camp, the mission, whatever. We are right now very low of help. We've had several retire. We've had some that have moved on. The other thing, we're needing people to come, retirees to come to help with maintenance and things like that. Um, you know, I I can't handle it all anymore. I, I know that. And so uh, we just need people to come to help us. Okay. Well, looking ahead, do you have any exciting plans on the horizon, initiatives that uh, KMM has for the future? Uh, we do. We are we were able through um, you all praying and other people praying, other people uh, donating and Lord providing things. We were able to put in two new shower houses at our camp uh, a few years ago, we've been using them now for a couple of years. We have the old shower houses that uh, now we're we're to the process. The uh, we're getting ready to remodel them, and uh, we're going to make uh, lodging out of them for people who come in. Uh, maybe like if you wanted to bring a youth group down, we'll have one for the girls, one for the guys, and they'll have their own shower house um, and everything. And then in the summer, I'm trying to get my junior staff more out of the shower houses with the campers okay and so that's things there we have uh we're working on that we're working on community centers that uh we're trying to remodel and and increase and do things there we've started on that we'll start uh, the second phase uh we have a, a, a barn that's there at camp that we use for the horse and for hay and different things we got to uh, do that. We're hoping in March to start working in that in April, and we got some groups coming. And so, um, and then just for new opportunities to go and speak, and as, you know, and to colleges and churches and everything for God to just keep opening new doors for mm. us. All right. Anything else you wanted to talk about? Any any final words or fi- final thoughts for the folks at Forest Park who are listening? 
Well, I'm, I just want to say thank you to the folks here and for friendship. Uh, I know that uh, several of, the, of our good friends, people who started that first time, they're, they're going to be with the Lord today. Mm. And, uh, you know, it was good to know them, their support, their prayers and everything. And then a lot of the ones that are left behind have lost a loved one or uh, whatever there. We continue to pray for them. We consider this as, you know, good uh, um, friendship, uh, good people here. And we just want to thank them for that, invite them down uh, we love, we're looking for college students, uh, you know, to come and to be counselors and uh, work with us there. We have the community center that we ha- need workers at in the summertime for sports ministry. Uh, we have some day camps and things there for kids who can't come to camp and everything. We try to keep having things for them to do, um, you know, to watch over them in the summertime and try to help them grow in the Lord and stay out of trouble. All righty. So, Anyway, anybody can help. Uh, they can just uh, contact us online or they can give us a call. All right. Well, William, thank you so much for stopping by. It's been really great to talk to you. Get uh, Again, get to know you a little bit better. Blessings on your ministry. Thank you for your faithful, faithful time uh, in, in ministry. And God bless you, sir. Well, Lord bless you all. Thank you. All right.